on the campus of Wichita State University at Shocker Women's Basketball here this afternoon as Wichita State entertains UMKC, the Kangaroos, out of the Western Athletic Conference. They're playing for the second consecutive year. Welcome inside, Charles Cocarina, Shane Dennis, along with Denny Garrigan. We're home, and it's uh, <laughs> that's kind of a rarity. Seven out of the ten Shocker games been away from home, now three in a row here. Yeah, after a very difficult stretch on the road, it's got to be great for Keith Adams to be back in the friendly confines of Charles Cocarina so she can get it about implementing that culture and that strategy in her first year at the helm. Now, when she got here, the, the cupboard wasn't exactly bare because Rangy Bassard was there. It's nice to know you can lean on her for some points night in and night out. Yeah, with an offense that's been a little bit up and down this year in terms of its production, it's great to have a consistent force like Bassard. She can score it from the elbow. She can drive it. Wichita State's done a great job of getting her the basketball in spots where she can do some damage, either scoring down, and down low or also expanding her game outside as well. Yeah, she had 21 points a couple of nights ago in the loss to Missouri State. You like to have a one-two punch, and you got to have the number two if you're going to have one, and Diamond Lockhart's emerged. Yeah, Wichita State's been looking for a complimentary, complimentary scorer to Bissard for several seasons now, and it very well may be Diamond Lockhart. 20 points against Missouri State in Springfield on 9 of 12 shooting. She showed increased aggressiveness and a willingness to hunt her shot. So the Shockers searching for a little revenge over UMKC winners against Wichita State a year ago. Starting lineups coming up. UMKC, not a real deep team, but Aries Washington is a really gifted scorer for the Ruse. Just an old-fashioned workhorse. Not surprising at all to see her getting 35-plus minutes a game. They want the ball in her hands a lot because she does great things with it. You can see there she can score. She's an excellent rebounder and also distributes at times as well. Their offense runs through her. They lost to Oral Roberts most recently, 76-73 in overtime. Aries Washington had 22 points and played every last second of that overtime loss. J.C. Hoyt in her first year as a head coach at UMKC, spent some time at Kansas State and Nevada, and there you see back in the mid-2000, mid to late 2000s was a player here. Nice homecoming for her. Yeah, got to be great for her to be back in Charles Coke Arena, I'm sure, in front of some friends and family, a very distinguished high school basketball player in the state at Hoxie and a former Shocker as well. So she is one in seven in her maiden voyage as a head coach. Of course, Keitha Adams, a no stranger to being a head coach, but in her first year at Wichita State as well. There's Keitha. Losing most recently at Missouri State a couple nights ago, 94 to 71. So they're looking to tighten up their defense a little bit here this afternoon against UMKC. Won a couple in a row before Missouri State tripped them up. There's their starting lineup. They will be without Kiki Thompson, the Shockers will, for the second straight game. She's not available here this afternoon. And we told you about Rangy Bassard and Diamond Lockhart, that one two punch uh, offensively. They combined for 41 the other night in Springfield. And UMKC's starting five, they only played six players all together in that OT game against ORU. One person came off the bench. That is, that is riding the horses that brought you. Right? I'll say. <laughs> they will lean on that rotation of six to seven players for virtually the entire game. And very important, obviously, for them to stay out of foul trouble. And Dejanae Dillard, their point guard, did not score a point in that game against UMKC. So you figured to get used to the five out on the floor for UMKC, and we'll see if Wichita State can maybe take advantage of that. They play a lot more players than, than J.C. Hoyt's Ruse do, so hopefully if you're a Shocker fan, they can wear them down. Rangy Bassard gonna jump center. It's 
Brian Interline, Galen Schertz, and Rebecca Taylor blowing the whistles here this afternoon. Shockers win the opening tip. Playing a little catch out on the perimeter, looking for Bassard in the inside of that zone, and Johnny on the spot. Sabrina Lozada Cabbage, two more points than she had all of the game against Missouri State a couple of nights ago. Well, not surprised at all to see UMKC coming out in the zone, trying to limit the post touches for Bassard. It will be imperative that the Shockers can get her the basketball near the elbow and let her go to work. There's Washington, who we highlighted just a few moments ago. Comes in averaging 19 points a game. Steal by Ambrosio. Was out of cabbage to trailer, scores and one. Boy, it's got to feel good for her to have a start like she had today as a redeemer from a couple of nights ago. Foul trouble just completely took her out of the basketball game up in Springfield. Fouled out in just 13 minutes of action and is already making a big impact this afternoon. That's a great steal from Ambrosio. Then the smart play to pull it up in transition when she didn't have numbers and find the trailer. The junior from Santa Fe, New Mexico, just a shade under eight points per contest, has a chance to have the first five of the game for Wichita State. She cashes it in. UMKC comes in averaging about 62 and a half points a game, so it's not exactly gonna be an up and down affair, you wouldn't think, and especially as thin as they are. They don't wanna get into a, a track meet with Wichita State. Tend to shoot. Washington just pounding it. Waldron, a guarded three, in and out, no good. Back tap, though, controlled by Wichita State. Bassard on the run. Euro step doesn't pay off. Pretty good transition defense back there from Waldron. Just kept her feet planted and forced Bassard to go through her. Off the heel. Pressed in the rebound for Wichita State on Washington's miss. And conversely, Wichita State may want to try to goad them into getting into a track meet. Again, Wichita State will be a little bit shorthanded as well. You mentioned Kiki Thompson is out. Also, Tamara Lee is not suited up. So they have a bit of thinness at the guard position as well. But still, when UMKC is only playing six and seven players, yeah. it could serve them well. Fanny Hawkinson got her first action of the season a couple of nights ago. So we may see her off the bench for Wichita State trying to cover for the absence of Kiki Thompson and others. Wichita State points pretty good team defense so far. A couple of guarded threes. Lockhart, elbow jumper, that's good. Boy, you couldn't envision a much better start for Wichita State. First nine points of the game here in the quarter. And that's perfect execution from Diamond Lockhart. Make the defense stop you in transition. No one did, and she was left completely vacated near the elbow. Offense was not the problem a couple of nights ago at Missouri State. A really weird stat line put up by the Shockers as a team. And it looks like UMKC is going to have an opportunity to break the skid. How often do you see a team shoot 50% from the field and lose by 23? This is one of those odd games. And I do believe, yeah, that was in the act of shooting. I was going to say, India Johnson will have a chance to shoot a couple. She doesn't score much. She had four points in 29 minutes the other night against Oral Roberts. Free throw is up and good. Not a particularly great foul shooting team overall, UMKC. Just over 66% as a team from the line. So India Johnson splits a pair at the line. And a runner in transition by Diamond Lockhart, kind of forcing the issue, but so far so good for her. Yeah, this is the Diamond Lockhart Wichita State's been waiting for for several years, willing to attack the basket, not just hanging out on the perimeter, being a distributor. Open baseline jumper wouldn't fall for Kristen Moore. And a turnover traveling after the loose ball. So as we mentioned, Keitha Adams probably couldn't be much happier. J.C. Hoyt probably a little frustrated getting off to a 10-point hole here just about four minutes into the game. And looks like the Roos are going to try and crank up the pressure a little bit just to get Wichita State out of their flow, but Shockers break through it easily. Except for that first possession, the Shockers have pretty much gotten whatever they wanted offensive. Nice look by Lozada Cabbage. And the Shockers did everything to make the basket there. That was 
good ball movement by the Shocks. India Johnson cut off, so she'll have to back it out. Now she needs some help. Three and a half minutes in. It's been all Shockers so far. Two team fouls against Wichita State here in the opening quarter. Shockers just recently missed their first shot. That three in the corner that wouldn't go down from Preston is their first miss, a five out of six. Kick ball, and we get away with one there. My eyes <laughs> deceiving me. Certainly looked like it on my end. J.C. Hoyt certainly thinks so, and Diamond Lockhart capitalizes. He's got six early points. Lozada Cabbage has five, and the Shockers are up a dozen. I think the takeaway, though, from that is that they are contesting every pass on this end. They are making it difficult for UMKC to even move the basketball. And I believe a foul on Wichita State underneath. A little reach, a little grab instead of a box out. And we will stay on this end. Checking in is Angie Tompkins for Wichita State for the first time, and Kiana Law checks in for UMKC. Tompkins, another girl who was very limited by foul trouble up in Springfield, only played 17 minutes. Was still very productive, though, 12 points and five boards. She'll fill up a, a stat sheet, that's for sure. They need her on the floor, though. They need her being productive. And, and one opportunity for Kristen Moore. Nice move by Moore, the junior. Got her isolated against a much smaller defender there in Diamond Lockhart, and that's exactly what you need to do, go right into the body. Lockhart did everything right up until the last second when she kind of brought that arm down, and that's what drew the contact and the foul. So the first basket of the game for the Ruse. And three-point play converted by Kristen Moore. Came in averaging just a shade under 12 a game. They get their scoring from pretty much three people. Kristen Moore, Aries Washington, and to some degree, Samantha Waldron. Yeah, they had a game earlier this year against Illinois State where Washington and Waldron combined to go 13 of 20, and everyone else went three of 36. Oh, my. Shockers have missed a couple in a row now as UMKC tries to slice this lead down. Halfway through the opening quarter. You really have to do a good job of finding Washington in transition. The Ruse will try and get her the basketball out in space. He's very good at getting to the free throw line. Pitch out into the corner. Dejanae Dillard doesn't shoot the ball much. She is a pass first point guard. Awkward little off balance left handed push shot by Law wouldn't go. And it didn't draw iron, so that's a turnover. Yeah, Shane, I gotta be honest, I'm pretty sure that hit the rim. And I think that might be what they're gonna look at they here in this timeout. They take a look at that during the timeout, yeah. 440 left to go in the opening quarter. The Shockers leading by nine. have started the opening quarter missing six of their seven shots from the floor. Meanwhile, Wichita State has only missed two of their first eight. A hot Wichita State start and a chilly one for the Ruse has led to a 13-4 Wichita State lead. Another 
part of this game to watch, Denning, is the rebound battle. This is a UMKC team that gets beaten on the boards pretty regularly. A minus 7.6 rebound margin, and right now they're holding their own. That's part of the reason why they're hanging around in this one. Yeah, UMKC relies pretty heavily upon their guards to help out in the rebounding battle. They don't have much size. Kiana Law at six foot one, essentially their only post player if you count Kristen Moore at six foot. So there is not a whole lot of length, not a whole lot of size down low, and you figure Wichita State can definitely capitalize on that. And as far as Wichita State is concerned, we, we touched on this just a little bit. A couple of nights ago in Springfield, they gave up 94 points. That, that's an alarming stat for a Shocker team to give up that many points. And it kind of skewed their offensive or their defensive averages on the season. They average, average allowing 71.4 points per game, but you certainly would like that a lot closer to 65, 66. You get up into the 70s, you're, you're asking a lot from your offense. And I think listening to some comments from Keith Adams this past week, that it sounded like it was purely an effort thing, not so much schematic and any kind of strategic changes, but just players having to want it on the defensive end. Well, they're certainly looking to atone for that effort the other night against Missouri State, a team they'd already beaten within the, the previous week. So that was probably a, a long trip home for the coaches and the players. Off to a good start here this afternoon. Good defensive effort so far. Looks like they did go back to the replay monitor and find that ball did hit the rim. So UMKC got the possession and they got the bucket out of it. Kiana Law took advantage of that, drove around Angie Tompkins. So the last five scored by the Ruse. Preston has one rattle out the rebound to Tiana Law. Here comes UMKC in transition. Dillard in a hurry, cut off. Little turnaround jumper's good by Kristen Moore. She's got five, and just like that, UMKC right back in it. Another one of the girls who played all 45 minutes against Oral Roberts, and uh, Ambrosio just gave her a little bit too much space that time for the face-up jumper. Bassard. Got her own, had it blocked, wanted a foul. Rangie's next two points will put her number 18 overall on the all-time scoring list at Wichita State. Just recently became a member of the 1,000-point club. Tompkins step back, long jumper is good. That's for three. Angie Tompkins with the first triple. That's not really a a staple of either one of these teams' offensive attack, the three-pointer. Wichita State, in this day and age, Denning, when you go to an entire game without a three-point make, that's really a rarity, and that's what happened to the Shockers the other night. And only shot eight of them. You don't see many teams attempting less than double-digit threes in a game, but Wichita State feels like their strength is definitely with their post players, and they kind of work inside out. So that 7-0 UMKC run is Snapped, and Wichita State has now scored five in a row as Rangie Bassard gets her first two. Great movement without the basketball there from Bassard, and a nice job by Tompkins looking block to block. Washington forced, and an offensive foul. One dribble too many. She was bound and determined, it looked like Denning, to get her way to the basket. Now, like I said, she loves to get to the free throw line, and she was driving in on Lockhart, but Bassard slid over, and she kind of used that off arm, pushed Bassard out of the way, and that's what drew the foul. Yeah, she is a 80% foul shooter, Aries Washington. Had 22 points and seven rebounds in that overtime loss to Oral Roberts. And UNKC has switched up the defensive look here to a 1-3-1, kind of a trapping zone look. Long jumper is good by Diamond Lockhart. Excellent first quarter for her. She's got eight. That shot is very indicative, I think, of the strides that she's taken. That was a confident shot. There's space in the zone. She stepped right into it, never even hesitated. Free throw line jumper wasn't good enough for Kristen Moore. And a three-pointer spins out from Samantha Waldron. Wichita State doing a pretty decent job of making it one and done on the UMKC offensive end as far as rebounds are concerned. Final two minutes of the quarter. Shockers have played well. Boy, really good movement without the ball. Everybody in the Shocker team against this UMKC zone, very active. It's gonna be those open pockets in the zone. It's all about finding them, moving without the ball, cutting with intent, and then having a passer who's on the same page. I believe that's the first personal on Angie Tompkins. Denning talked uh, a little bit earlier about her 
inability to stay on the floor consistently because of foul trouble. That is her first. No shocker has more than one. To the free throw line, Kiana Law spins it up and in. Not a particularly great foul shooter. That makes her 10 out of 21 from the free throw line this year. She was incredible against Oral Roberts though last time out. Went for 29 points off the bench on 13 of 17 <laughs> shooting. Got pretty much whatever she wanted. She was the only reserve to get into that game that went OT. Three, oh, uh, three UMKC players played every minute. You tell people, well, we got 29 points off the bench from one player. <laughs> Pretty good output. <laughs> bench scoring, 29. A force by Lozada Cabbage and a good job by Keon Law to sag down and knock that one away. That's a tough break right there for Kristen Moore. Right off the catch, wasn't really allowed to make much of a move, but Wichita State gets the call there as Lozada Cabbage knocked to the deck. Now the pressure by UMKC turned up a little bit more, kind of token pressure, three-quarter court. Andre Stovall in there for the first time for Wichita State. Ambrosio for an angle three. Cesaria Ambrosio, a rare three-pointer. Wichita State will certainly take that. She'd only hit three all season coming in, but stepped into that with confidence. And this Wichita State offense operating at a pretty high level right now. Sure is. Ambrosio with the bump. That will be her second. They caught UMKC in a weak side rotation there. There were way too many blue jerseys on one side of the floor, and Ambrosio left pretty much all by her lonesome. Shockers are two out of three from three-point range. Here's Aries Washington. We talked about her being a very good foul shooter, and right on cue misses that one. The first of two, 80.4% from the line, 19 points. There you see the well-rounded game of Aries Washington. It basically gave her the keys to the offense as a freshman. She started 22 games her first season on campus and has really grown into quite the player. No points in the last three and a half minutes for UMKC after they had threatened to get back in this thing. I think it was 13 to eight at one point, but Shockers have turned it up since then. Loose ball, last touch by Stovall. And the last 28.3 of the quarter will belong to UMKC if they want to bleed the clock all the way down. So a lot to trigger it in. Dillard with 25 seconds left in a quarter owned by Wichita State. Stovall content just to let Dillard pound it. Good weak side help by Wichita State with two, with one. That's about the only thing. It didn't go right for Wichita State. Diamond Lockhart had eight first quarter points. The Shockers got out to a 13 to one lead and they lead by 13 at the end of one here on WSU TV.
Well, you couldn't ask for much better first quarter than that if you're a Wichita State Shocker fan, especially in light of what happened to him a couple of nights ago in Springfield. Shane Dennis, Denny Gehrig here at the Roundhouse. 23-10 after 10 minutes, not too shabby. Yeah, I think Springfield is a little bit of a wake-up call for this team. They came out complacent against a Bears squad that they had just defeated earlier in the week, and they got shook around a little bit, but this was an offense that was absolutely functioning at a very high level. They shot 56% from the field, and Diamond Lockhart continued to be very aggressive, leading the way with eight points. Only two turnovers to six for UMKC. The Ruse missed eight of their 11 shots, 27.3%. They missed all six of their three-pointers, and Wichita State, for the most part, did their job on the glass, out-rebounding UMKC by one. So all in all, it's something that you don't necessarily have to dominate like that in quarters two through four, but that certainly gets you off to a good start. And they did a spectacular job, too, against Aries Washington. Held her to just two shot attempts. She missed both her free throws, had a couple of turnovers, and really just kind of dictated the terms of how this game was going to be played. So the Shockers, as Denning mentioned, 55.6% from the floor. Stop by the Shockers Sports Grill and Lanes two hours prior to all the WSU men's basketball games. Enjoy great game day specials on food and drinks. Perfect place to meet up with friends before all the men's home games. And when they're on TV, obviously check them out on the tube at Shocker Sports Grill and Lanes. Lower level in the Radigan Student Center. Plenty of great drink specials, as you can see there as well. 23-10, Wichita State after one. And Denning, you mentioned that the, the game that these two teams played last year was wildly entertaining, went the way of the ruse, but it was an exciting ball game. Pretty much a one possession game the whole way. Samantha Waldron had a big afternoon with 22 points. Well, Wichita State, as we mentioned, gave up 94 points a couple of nights ago, and it has been a 180 here today. They've had a vice grip on UMKC's offense, at least so far. Lockhart off the glass, scores again. Diamond Lockhart has 10 points, came in averaging 9.3, but she is emerging. Like you said, Wichita State knows it's going to get 18, 19 points from Rangy Bassard most, most, uh, most nights, but Diamond Lockhart's really helping out. Just the search for a complimentary scorer. It's been going on for years now, and uh, for a long time it looked like it might be Angie Tompkins. There was some thought that it might be Julia Preston or Tamara Lee on the outside, but... Diamond Lockhart has raised her season average four points and just looking like a completely different player right now. She is 14 for her last 20 from the floor. And for somebody that's perimeter oriented, that's certainly more than useful. Long three in the corner by Tompkins won't go down. And unimpeded to the basket, India Johnson lays it in. She's got three. I think Diamond Lockhart thought she had some backside help and just allowed Johnson to drive essentially unabated to the bucket. Loose ball picked up on the baseline, wouldn't go. Preston won't get a much easier look than that. And Lozada Cabbage forces a tie ball, and Wichita State steals a possession there as Keanu Law was just kind of standing there under the basket been a couple of tr transition opportunities for Wichita State after they break that pressure where UMKC looks just a little bit flustered trying to get set up defensively and they've had some open shot opportunities as a result couldn't capitalize. Shockers with a fresh 30. Lozada Cabbage had five early points been quiet lately. Left hand hooks it up wouldn't go and will stay here is last touch by Keanu Law. Tompkins Telling one of the officials to watch for the holding underneath. Two minutes in in the second quarter, the Shockers are basically led by a dozen from the outset. It was 13 to one before UMKC got their first basket. Shockers with a rare turnover. <laughs> a frustrated Kiana Law came off a couple of picks, thought she was fouled, and the foul 
is drawn by Kristen Moore and she'll go to the free throw line for another opportunity at three point play. Couple and ones now for Kristen Moore who's been cutting hard to the basket and when she's been matched up on a smaller defender has utilized her strength and size to just kind of out muscle. Stovall picks up her first personal foul. Alicia Fay checks in for Wichita State. Rangy Bassard back in there after a rest. Good offensive start for Kristen Moore. She has eight, averages 12 on the year. Bassard threw it away and a layup is good by India Johnson. Bassard thought she was gonna get a little help in backcourt and India Johnson read it all the way. And now Wichita State getting a little loose with the ball. And possession arrow will favor UMKC. Probably not the first option on a press breaker to have Faye handling the basketball. That is not really her role. Just needs to get it off to a guard and let them try and work it up. Seven points in a row now by the Ruse. They claw their way back in it. Aries Washington has been quiet. Average is 19, she is scoreless. And that's an easy call as Kiana Law extended the arm. Player control foul will give it back to Wichita State. Now, the key the rest of the quarter here is what Wichita State does against this UMKC press because it's bothered them last couple of possessions. And what's odd is it hadn't done much of anything for the early part of the first quarter. It was just been token pressure that had fallen back, but it had absolutely ramped it up, making it much more of a trapping press. And they almost got another one. Uh, overplay that is going to go on. Dillard, boy, that was a kind of a 50-50 call right there. They both came together about the same time, but Dejanay Dillard is the guilty party for UMKC. Well, she's been almost a one-man press in and of herself. She has extended the defense well out near the half-court line and even beyond when they've gone full court. Dillard came into the game averaging just two a game. So offense is way down the list on her list of priorities. She's a facilitator and a defensive specialist. Tough shot right there, knocked down by Preston. She's got four. Just needed to make it a little more difficult than the open look she had in transition earlier. That was a nice one dribble move, cleared enough space and got to a, an area near the free throw line where she could operate. Lead back up to 10 again. It was as high as 15 a moment ago. Dillard tried to wrap it around Andre Stovall. Well, reset to 15. You've talked about this already a couple of times, the confidence that the Shocker players are stepping into their shots. Uh, Julia Preston, that was a confident shot by her too. And getting to a comfortable spot on the floor too. That's big for Rangie Bassard. We, we talked about how she's at her best when she's operating in the 16 to 18 foot area as opposed to beyond the arc. And the same holds true there for Julia Preston. Shockers with a one and done again down on the UMKC offensive end. Shockers plus three in the rebounding category as of right now. A little runner off the glass wouldn't go. Diamond Lockhart robbed, but Andre Stovall hustled over to pick it up. Another possession, fresh 30. Smallest player on the court coming up with the basketball at five foot two. Stovall racing in to snatch it, but almost another bucket for Lockhart, who continues to operate at a high level. Fay in the corner, no good, and there's Lockhart. Diamond mean Lockhart's having herself a first half. She took a shot too. She is gesturing over to the Wichita State bench. I think she needs a blow. Well, if I'm six out of 10 from the floor, I think I'm staying out there, <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me. Shockers by a dozen. Good job by Faye to overplay and knock it away. Another turn turnover for UMKC. They've gone another two minutes and change without a field goal. An offensive foul on Rangy Bassard. A really nice job of anticipating by Kiana Law to draw the offensive foul. And this is an officiating crew that has definitely shown a willingness to call the player control or offensive foul. That was good anticipation on the spin back move from Bassard. Well, Bassard's been kind of quiet, but she's gotten plenty of help so far. It's 29-17 at the under five timeout here in quarter number two.
Well, it used to be, uh, until today, it was death taxes and Rangy Bassard scoring 20 points. But this afternoon, Diamond Lockhart has picked up where she left off a couple of nights ago against Missouri State. I've said it before, but she just looks like a completely different player offensively. Had the 20 points against Missouri State. And then the two games prior, she had six assists in each of those two games. To me, that speaks to a player who is now just comfortable in her role in the offense, whether it's as a distributor or whether they need her to score. She's very capable of doing either. She's 15 of her last 22 from the floor. Nine out of 12 against Missouri State, six out of 10 here this afternoon. And she's as big a reason as anybody that Wichita State got out to not only a quick start, but it's kind of held UMKC at arm's length. It's been a, a 12 point game really from the start. And it's been a game of runs a little bit too. UMKC has made a couple charges where they put up five or six points in a row. But Wichita State has had the answer each time. Lockhart able to save a couple of possessions with her hustle and then that eventually led to buckets as Wichita State remains in front. Lockhart has seen her field goal percentage slowly but steadily climb up to a, as of the beginning of this game, a respectable 42%, but it's going to be better than that, certainly with that 6 for 10 start. But for somebody that, I don't know that she could get her shot anytime she wanted it, but it's getting close to being that way. She, she can create. And she, she has to do that, too, just because we, we've talked a lot about the, the lack of three-point shooting that Wichita State has. And, Mostly it's a team of shooters where unless their feet are set, it's not a shot that necessarily Keith Adams is looking for. So she's going to have to create. She's going to have to move off the bounce. Well, whatever it's the impetus, it's working for Wichita State. They have done a lot of things right, not only offensively but defensively. An offensive rebound by Paige Hussa, who did not play in that ORU game. So J.C. Hoyt kind of pushing some different buttons here this afternoon. but. None of them have really worked consistently to fall back into that zone again. And they're not messing around with Diamond Lockhart anymore. She's drawing a lot of attention now. Chapel, long jumper, no good. And Lockhart steals the offensive rebound. Stovall. Clock didn't reset. No, it didn't. Chapel's going to jack one up and hit. With one second on the shot clock, Jaleesa Chapel hits a three after missing the first shot badly, stepped into that second one with confidence, and there was never a doubt. Great to see from Jaleesa Chapel. She had four points a couple of nights ago against Missouri State, playing in her fifth game this year after missing all of last with a knee injury. Mary's Washington continues to struggle offensively. And a double dribble turnover for UMKC. The lead can go up to 17 or more now. That's a shot you can live with if you're Wichita State from Washington, just a guarded long three. Meanwhile, on the other end, Jaleesa Chapel having to fire it up with only one on the shot clock. Shockers are three of seven from deep this afternoon after going 0 for 8 against Missouri State the other night. I don't know that it's necessarily this simple inning, but Wichita State looks very comfortable in their offense. UMKC looks very disjointed on their offensive end. Faye picks up the, in, a, in essence, loose ball foul there. And how odd is it to see that with Rangy Bissard essentially being a non-factor? Yep. UMKC scoreless in their last four and a half minutes, so this drought has lasted a while. They had it cut to eight. 25-17, but the Shockers have scored the last seven. Washington struggles continue. Hussa with a putback, though. Paige Hussa only averages two and a half points a game. Steal by Dillard. Nineteen footer for Kristen Moore. 10 points for Kristen Moore, and that prompts a shocker timeout. So the lead cut to 32-21, and you kind of hit it right on the head, Denning. It's been a game of runs. Wichita State has had the vast majority of them, but 
just when you think they're going to run away and hide from UMKC, they reel off four in a row. Yeah, you get the sense that if the Roos are going to stay around in this ballgame, their press is going to be a big part of that reason why. They've already forced seven Wichita State turnovers. Dillard has really made an impact on the defensive end with her quickness in her hands and leading to a bucket there. Kristen Moore in that overtime game against ORU only mustered four points. And she is a much more capable scorer that, than that, as Wichita State's finding out today. She's got 10 points. She averages 12 and 6.6 .6 rebounds. She is kind of like Diamond Lockhart is absorbing all the points uh, from Rangy Bassard. Well, Kristen Moore is doing that on behalf of Aries Washington right now. And a girl kind of hinted at her breakout performance late last season. She was named to the All-WAC tournament team and averaged 21 points per game in that tournament. So there was reason to believe that this performance was coming from her. Well, now UMKC has another possession to make it a little more interesting. Cut it underneath 10. The Shockers have led by double digits the vast majority of this first half. And <laughs> kind of waiting to see how crab many steps you actually get. Yeah, crab dribble, nice. Turnovers have been an issue for UMKC. They have 11. Here comes Lockhart. Shockers have numbers. Lozada Cabbage left it short. Shockers got exactly what they wanted on that break. That was a great find from Lockhart as Preston gets a bit of a silly foul in backcourt. The only problem was that Lozada Cabbage just caught it a little bit too far under and the, the angle wasn't right for her to go off glass. So the final two minutes of the first half, and you get the feeling that the Ruse are kind of hanging by a thread, but they have a possession yet again, the second consecutive, that they get a chance to whittle this lead down to single digits. Kick ball by Diamond Lockhart. Wichita State has really put an emphasis on denying that post pass. We've seen a couple kick balls already and a steal on one as those guards are trying to stay active with their hands and feet. Four to shoot. Dillard's got to force one up. Boy, if you're Wichita State, that's what you want. Dillard is not a scorer. Tompkins facing up on Hussa, left it short, partially blocked. Paige Hussa has done a nice job of infusing a little energy into UMKC off the bench. It's not Washington's afternoon so far, at least in the first half. 0 for 5 from the floor. Came in averaging 19 points. She is scoreless. And I think Wichita State will be very pleased with the shot chart when they see it at halftime. They have forced a lot of guarded long jumpers from UMKC. And as we've talked about, that is not either one of these teams' games. That three wouldn't go for Diamond Lockhart. And now UMKC virtually has the final possession. There's a a second or two difference of the two clocks. Been stuck on 32-21 for a while. Shocker scoreless in their last three and a half minutes. UMKC in another one of their droughts. Hope to be joined by assistant track and field coach John Wise coming up here at the half, so stick around. Tompkins with a baseball heave that is a little offline. So it was a little herky-jerky at the end, but Wichita State got off to a good enough start where they have been able to control the pace of this one. 32-21 at halftime here at Charles Coke Arena. We'll come back with our halftime show here on WSU-TV coming up.
Back at Charles Coke Arena, Wichita State with a fast start and basically have fended off UMKC since then. 32-21 here at half. Pleased to be joined by the assistant uh, track and field coach, John Wise. Been 12 years, man. How's that feel? Yeah, I, uh, it's, it's gone quickly, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, I ran for Coach Rainbolt in college at Kent State, so me and him have worked together for even longer than that. But uh, I've, I've really loved uh, being in Wichita, and it's definitely my home now. Now, what's recently been an annual thing is your inner squad get together yesterday. Tell us about that. Yeah, it was great. We have our, our annual inner squad meet, which is kind of a preview of our season. Uh, it's a chance for our kids to get out there and, and put, put on a uniform and, and uh, you know, kind of see where we're at. It's a, it's a early season time trial, you could say. Uh, it's our scrimmage, and we had a lot of really good performances, as you're seeing there on some of the, the highlights. You know, we had some, uh, we got a lot of newcomers, so it's our first kind of taste of collegiate competition, so to speak, and a lot of a lot of really good things, a, a lot of good, a lot of things to learn from as well. You know, early in the season like that, and uh, then we had a lot of fun stuff like this. We had a tug of war at the end of the end of the meet that. that uh, it's more of a fun thing for the kids to, to compete with each other. and So it was, it was a big day. We had a bunch of alumni come back as well. We had over 30 alumni compete in the meet. We had a banquet last night where we honored our seniors from last year. We had a great 2017 track and field season where we won all the Missouri Valley ch titles. So, uh, so it, was a, it was a great fun day of track and field, and it's a good way to kick off our season. Is it true uh, you taught Hunter Veith everything he knows? <laughs> Uh, I think at this point he's teaching us uh, more than we're teaching him. You Pretty know. special, isn't he? Yeah, you know, he's currently ranked number one in the nation in the heptathlon still, and, and he's a legitimate title contender, uh, both indoors and outdoors in the heptathlon, decathlon from Cheney, Kansas. So a local guy, somebody for uh, Shocker fans to follow, and, and uh, I think all year long you're going to hear a lot of great things from Hunter Veith. And, just a wonderful a guy who came in as a more of a smaller developer type athlete uh, in terms of con contribution and now has become literally one of the best athletes in the United States. You, you mentioned Coach Rainbow. You guys really had it going in the Missouri Valley Conference, but just like every other program now into the American Athletic Conference, what do you see differently on the horizon when it pertains to the American? It's a little bit better than the Missouri Valley in terms of overall depth. The sprint events are really good. Uh, there's a guy named Carl Lewis coaching in our league. You might have heard of that guy. Uh, so, so the sprint events, which I coach, are are really good. They're as good as just about any conference in the country. And so we definitely have a challenge there. But um, as an overall team, I think we're going to be, be really good. Our kind of a tale of two teams. We have a, a kind of strong veteran men's team that will challenge, I think, to win a title. And we have a young women's team that's rebuilding that we graduated as probably the greatest group in Shocker history last year. So uh, two different kind of teams to watch, very, two very exciting groups, and uh, they're very excited about the new challenge in the American Conference. Last question before I let you go, January 11th, is that what we have to look forward to next? Yeah, that'll be our next meet, the Shocker Prelude at the Heskett Center. And uh, that's uh, that, that also that week we have the KUK State, Wichita State Triangular in uh, Manhattan. So that meet we have, that week we have two meets. Uh, we'll kind of split up our squad a little bit, but surely excited to start off our season at home January 11th. Sounds good. Go get them this spring. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, John Wise, assistant track and field coach at Wichita State. Shockers on the hardwood lead UMKC 32-21. Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world.
Welcome back to Charles Coke Arena, Wichita State. Got out to a 13-1 lead. Uh, basically traded points at different times in that first half. Danny Garrick joining, joining me now. Uh, I think that 13 to one run to start the, the game is really the, tells the tale. Pretty much it, yeah. isn't it? Uh, UMKC made a couple charges where they put together runs of five or six points in a row, but ultimately the Shockers just kind of kept them at bay. And we know how big Diamond Lockhart was to that, but ultimately a pretty good job of just kind of fending off UMKC, which made a couple charges. Yeah, Aries Washington going scoreless always helps too if you're Wichita State. Now as it pertains to the American Athletic Conference, of course, uh, we're still not into the conference yet, but it's looming around the corner. There you see the overall records uh, for the American, not surprisingly, UConn at the top of the heap, but it looks to me like uh, USF Houston Temple gives us something to look forward to come wintertime. Much in the way that Wichita State has been looking for a complimentary scorer to go with Rangy Bissard, I think the American Conference is looking for someone to compliment UConn and USF. <laughs> Those two have been at the top pretty much since the outset of this conference, and they look like they'll be there again this year. And there you see some specialty awards. Uh, Jasmine Harris out of Houston led the Cougars to a 3-0 week. Uh, Davis averaged a double-double in a 2-0 week for Temple as the freshman of the week. There's your weekly honor roll as we look around the conference and look forward to conference play coming up here in a couple of weeks. But so far so good today for Wichita State. 32-21 over UMKC, the first of three in a row here at home for the Shots. Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Duncan's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth full body flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Duncan. On the heels of allowing 94 points just a couple of days ago to keep UMKC at 21 after the first two quarters has certainly got to be one of the things that Keith Adams is plenty happy about. They got off to a really good start offensively. Denning got pretty much any shot they wanted and shooting 55.6 from the floor in the first quarter. Yeah, that first quarter was all about Wichita State capitalizing on opportunities in transition, pushing the ball aggressively when UMKC was trying to try and kind of trying to utilize that token full court pressure, but the Shockers broke through it got some great looks and defensively they have been very sound as well limiting Washington and forcing 11 UMKC turnovers. Now the offense wasn't exactly humming along in the second quarter quite as much as it did in the first they shot only 28.6 from the floor in the second quarter but the constant was for Wichita State their defense as far as UMKC's offensive percentage it was not good really at any point and including right now 30.8. 31% for UMKC for the game and then only 33% in that second quarter. So it didn't get a whole lot better. Wichita State has done a very good job of making every pass difficult on the defensive end. They've kept the ball out of Washington's hands and as a result, she has really tried to force it, I think. Six total shots, three turnovers, a couple of offensive fouls, and Wichita State has just done everything right on her so far. And the stats that you don't see there also, Wichita State, 12 points off turnovers, 11 giveaways for UMKC altogether. All adds up to 32-21, Wichita State. At the break, we'll be back with more after this on WSU-TV.
Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Introducing Dunkin's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth full body flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Dunkin. KC, not the kind of team that shoots at a high clip percentage-wise. We told you they only average about 62.5 points a game, but they shoot 36.4% from the floor. Wichita State actually did better than that defensively. 30.8% from the floor for UMKC. Missed all nine of their three-pointers. And while kudos to Wichita State, Denning, I don't know if you can expect that again. And... UMKC, you would think, would have at least one good run in them, but they just had too many scoring droughts in that first half. I think Wichita State just took away what it is that UMKC likes to do on the offensive end. They forced them into long, guarded jump shots, and neither one of these teams strokes it particularly well from beyond the arc. The Shockers 28%, the Ruse 27%, and so more times than not, if that's how a possession ends with a long, guarded three, we saw one from Dillard, we saw one from Washington, regardless of whether or not it goes in, I think you're pleased with the result of that defensive effort. Shockers did knock down three of them from distance. Jaleesa Chapel with a buzzer beater uh, at the shot clock. Angie Tompkins was one out of two. And Cesaria Ambrosio dumped one in for her only basket of that first half. Diamond Lockhart led everybody with 12 points. Kristen Moore was the only double-figure scorer for UMKC. Again, they are not a deep team, uh, the Ruse. They did play a couple of players off the bench. Got a nice little lift in five minutes from Paige Hussa, but... This is a team in UMKC that has a lot of players that rarely, if ever, come off the floor. Dejanae Dillard and Kristen Moore did not get a rest in that first half. So we'll see what Wichita State has in store for the Ruse. 32-21, our halftime score. It was that way for about the last three and a half minutes of that first half. Shockers, speaking of scoring droughts, had one of their own that was right at four minutes ending up the quarter. Or this could be even a little bit worse. Shockers get the first possession. Lozada Cabbage keys it in to Diamond Lockhart. Preston was wide open for a long time and couldn't knock it down. There's an offensive rebound for Diamond Lockhart. Seventh offensive rebound of the afternoon for the Shockers. Lockhart had a great first half. 12 points, three rebounds. Skip pass, Preston. Little runner in the lane, wouldn't go. Bassard active, gets the rebound, thought she got fouled, and scores it. <laughs> She's feisty down there. She was ready to turn around and take a look at someone who had shoved her in the back. It was her teammate, though. Her own teammate. She has had qualms with the officiating, I think, most I think of so. the afternoon, thought that she has gotten banged around, especially after some offensive rebounds. And so any kind of contact right now, she is... Uh, she is looking to fight. Hypersensitive to it. All right. She only had two in the first half, so that's a good start for her. She has five for the game, averaging nearly 18. You know, to take that a little bit further, if you aren't UMKC, you maybe a little grab here and there, a little push here and there that you see she's kind of on edge, maybe get her out of her game. 
her and Angie Tompkins are very emotional players, and that's what makes them so good. Great block there by Bassard, and the Shockers will get it back. But those two, at times, can get a little bit too emotional. Mm -hmm. It can start to affect them if things aren't going their way. Bassard with the rejection and an insult to injury. Washington was the last to touch it. Washington now 0 for 7 from the floor. I think everybody was a little, little confused on who actually had the possession there. The Shockers have it as Washington touched it last. Jay-Z Hoyt is less than pleased with the explanation she just received. Jay-Z's return to Wichita, former point guard from 2006 to 2009. In her first year at UMKC is the head coach. Bassard coming from the weak side couldn't handle a kind of a bullet pass from Lozada Cabbage. Yeah, that's a good idea though. A, a different kind of pass I think works there. You need to put a little more arc on it, give Bassard time to get block to block, get set up with her feet set. She's able to make a tough catch and probably finish there. Shockers have led by as many as 15. A nice little banker off the window by India Johnson. She has seven points. UMKC really needs her to get going. She has been on some kind of a cold streak as Bassard turns it over. Johnson, in her last three games from the floor, has gone 0 of 7, 2 of 11, and 2 of 6. Only had four points the other night against ORU in 29 minutes. So the lead sliced back to a dozen. Seems like we've been here for quite a while. Wichita State just keep playing keep away, I guess, on the scoreboard, for lack of a better phrase. Another miss by UMKC, and the Shockers in a hurry the other way. Now Ambrosio will back it out, set it up. Shockers deep into the possession. Five to shoot. Lozada Cabbage had to force it up. Block. Bassard right there. Good hustle by Ranji Bassard. She's got seven. Lead back up to 14 again. Johnson in a hurry banks it in. India Johnson with back-to-back -back baskets. She's got a quick first step. She does. She can really get by you on the perimeter if you're not sliding your feet, staying active. Lockhart dumps it off for Lozada Cabbage who finishes. She had five really early points. Quiet after that. And that's a... A testament to Diamond Lockhart not pressing and looking for her own shot, even though she started off hot. That's what I'm talking about, though, when I say attacking the press. Kristen Moore with an and one opportunity. When UMKC is going to throw that full court pressure at you, if you break the initial wave, you're going to have numbers just about every time. And if you can stay under control, you're going to have a chance for an easy basket. As was a good physical move inside from Moore. She's got three and one so far this afternoon. Rangie Bassard's second personal along the way. Well, Wichita State just can't seem to shake UMKC, but the Ruse can't cut the lead below double digits either. Kristen Moore leading all Ruse in points with 13. Here's an opportunity for the Ruse to get it under 10. Had a couple of chances late in that first half, but a three and a half minute scoring drought prevented that and a wild shot by India Johnson, but she got her own, banks it in, and now we got a ball game, 39-30. Keitha Adams wants a shocker timeout. So Wichita State only had nine points in that second quarter and a sluggish start here in the third as gotten UMKC within nine. It's been a while since they've trimmed the deficit to this view. This press has really been feast or famine for UMKC. It seems like they've either given up a, a pretty easy bucket on one end or they forced a turnover. They're already three in this quarter for Wichita State. A couple of them live ball turnovers that have set up UMKC in the offensive end. And India Johnson starting to be a lot more aggressive has given them a huge boost. Well, and that doesn't hurt either. When you got somebody that can get to the basket if you're having trouble 
making a basket, 31% like they did in the first half. India Johnson had the right idea, take it to the hoop. So much of the problem for both these teams offensively is that they lack that player who with the shot clock winding down, you can just give the basketball to and say, go make a play. Not necessarily a basket, but just break down a defense and set somebody else up. And there you see India Johnson, five out of nine from the floor, 11 points with those back-to-backers. There's the one that really hurt for Wichita State. A wild shot, two shockers came together to try to grab the rebound, and one of the other UMKC players knocked it directly to India Johnson, who had the, the easy banker. So 39 to 30, and UMKC has come out four out of eight from the floor. Shockers are respectable three out of seven, but turnovers have been an issue for the Shockers here in the quarter. That's three for them to none for UMKC, who had 11 in the first half. So the Shockers 39 to 30 in search of their third victory of the season. UMKC came in at one and seven in Wichita State's game here this afternoon, the first of three in a row at home. UMKC hadn't been at home either. They are 0 and six on the road before today's game. And they are certainly fighting an uphill battle. They trailed 13 to one in the first quarter. If you just joined us, Wichita State led individually by Diamond Lockhart's 12 first half points. Rangy Bassard, in case you missed it, only had two points in the first half. And UMKC's leading scorer, Aries Washington, averages 19 points a game. She's 0 for 7 from the floor, missed both of her free throws, and has three turnovers. But UMKC, not exactly right there knocking on the door, but certainly closer than they've been in a long time. We're going to see Wichita State's upcoming schedule. We'll have the Winter Classic for you next weekend as Chicago State and Alcorn State face off against the Shockers in back-to-back -back games. And then a tough road trip to South Dakota State before the conference finally starts December 30th against the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. I think the Roos are going to come back into that 1-3-1 one, one, trapping half-court press now as they continue to switch up defensive looks. A lot of length on that point of the 1-3-1 in Aries Washington. Lozada Cabbage hits a three. Boy, Wichita State got exactly what they needed there. Good ball movement, crisp passing, and a nice finish by Lozada Cabbage from the corner. She's a more than capable three-point shooter when she's got her feet set and she's in rhythm, and that was exactly the case there. Good pass from Lockhart right into the shooter's pocket. She released it with confidence. Shockers four of 10 from three-point range this afternoon. Law, short jumper, rims out. Kept alive by Tompkins. Cesario, uh, Ambrosio rather, pulls it away for Wichita State. So they get a three, they get a stop, and now Cabbage a little short. Tompkins to put back, and now Wichita State all of a sudden back in control. Angie Tompkins has five. Well, somehow Dejanae Dillard got matched up on Tompkins trying to box her out down low, and that was a mismatch that Angie took advantage of, but quickly back the other way, Washington. Washington's first basket of the game. Lead is a dozen again after that little mini run by Wichita State. Lockhart pulls up, back rim no good, got her own. Boy, she's done that up handful of times here this afternoon, chasing down her own offensive rebound. Lockhart with five on the shot clock, no good. Here come the Ruse back the other way. Two on three and a double dribble by India Johnson who lost control of it for just a bit. And a timeout on the floor. Wichita State survived a little mini run there by UMKC and they lead it by a dozen.
Shockers leading 44 to 32. Basically been that way for the vast majority of this game. UMKC got within nine, but then Wichita State got a nice three-pointer from Sabrina Lozada Cabbage, her first one of the day. She has 10 points. And then Angie Tompkins with the offensive rebound and putback. This was right after it was 39-30 UMKC, and you felt like that, that the Roos were climbing back into it, but five in a row by Wichita State kind of had a, had a status quo again. They pretty much had the answer every single time that UMKC has put together a mini run this afternoon, and so much of that has been their ability to move the basketball against the zone. Chris passes, finding open spots, and then shooters who are ready to shoot the basketball when they do catch it. Sabrina Lozada Cabbage, the junior from Santa Fe, New Mexico, went scoreless and fouled out a couple of nights ago in that loss to Missouri State. And she came out really, really on fire. She had five very quick points. Actually, I think the first five points of the game for the Shockers and has since added five more. So Wichita State, in spite of the fact that, and we talked about it at the very open, Rangy Bassard, you can almost book it, that she's going to have 17 points or more. She's had a little bit of a tough time offensively here this afternoon, but Lozada Cabbage and Diamond Lockhart have stepped up and absorbed the slack. And one thing Ranger Bassard has done, even though she hasn't been scoring the basketball, is still helping out on the glass. She leads everyone with seven rebounds, has been a force offensively, getting the basketball and getting those extra possessions for Wichita State. So midway through the third quarter, the Shockers have taken a punch from UMKC and answered with one of their own, but a turnover there gives UMKC new life. 4.20 left to go in the period. Dejanae Dillard, a little point guard directing traffic. Got Tompkins on Dillard right now. India Johnson has that one crawl in and the foul. India Johnson has been really active in the second half, living in the Shockers paint. So another opportunity to get within nine. It was 39-30 a moment ago. And the three-point play is completed by India Johnson. Johnson has 14. Shockers break pressure, but the Ruse do a nice job of scrambling around and covering up. Tompkins lost it, but it was because she was mugged. India Johnson with a grab. A lot of good things can happen if you can get Angie Tompkins the basketball in this area of the floor. It will either force the defense to sag in and maybe free up some space on the outside for Lockhart or get her one-on-one -on -one against a smaller defender. Again, the Shockers without Kiki Thompson this afternoon for the second straight game. We haven't seen Fanny Hawkinson, who played 15 minutes the other night against Missouri State. Jumper is good by Yalia Preston. She's got six. She's done that move a couple of times now, catching the ball right out near the top of the key, taking one or two hard dribbles towards the center, kind of squaring her shoulders and getting set up for that mid-range jump shot. Johnson got cut off by Angie Tompkins at 6'2", waiting for near the right block. A wild runner goes in by Kristen Moore. Moore's got 15. She really seeks out the contact. Even if she doesn't get the foul call, she is willing to go right into your body to create space. Boy, a dangerous pass by Angie Tompkins. Lozada Cabbage did a nice job of being aggressive and going after it. Well, that turnover written all jump over. Jump ball to a receiver it there, one-on-one. -on -one. High pointed it. Lockhart into the keyhole. Now back out to Preston for three, a little short. Kiana Law with a rebound for the Roos. That risky pass somehow got through Law. Free throw line jumper is good. And UMKC, as close as they've been in a long, long time, cut the lead to seven. Lockhart in a hurry. No good. Good hustle by... Cesaria Ambrosio. And a miraculous reverse layup by Angie Tompkins. She's got seven. 
offensive rebounds are kind of keeping Wichita State afloat. A couple of possessions and where UMKC could really turn the tide with a stop and a board, and they haven't been able to get both. Johnson making her way to the basket yet again. India Johnson has 16. She averages 5.4. Kristen Moore picks up the foul in backcourt. That's her second. Shockers clinging now all of a sudden to a seven point lead. They led by as many as 15. Preston to key it in for the Shockers. Now UMKC falls back. Final 90 seconds of the third quarter. Preston, a rainbow three wouldn't go. She's missed her last two. Ruse have a chance to cut it to five or less. Bassard with a rejection with 118 left in the quarter. You knew the offensive output and efficiency probably wouldn't last all four quarters, but that first quarter really I don't know if it spoiled us a little bit, but it's been a shock to the system the last two quarters. And a steal by Lozada Cabbage, that was big. So UMKC fires a blank on that trip down the floor, trailing by seven. Great anticipation by Lozada Cabbage. That only comes when you've read the scouting report, you know what teams like to utilize on out of bounds plays. Bassard scores for the Shockers, and it seems like every time UMKC is kind of on the brink, Wichita State turns them away and comes up with a big play of their own. Nine-point lead. And that runner falls in for India Johnson. Well, it's clear if UMKC needs a bucket, they're just going to go high pick and roll with Johnson, let her charge down the lane, and something good's going to happen more times than not. She has created a lot of space. Ambrosio to Bassard, and a banker wouldn't go. Went to the left hand but she draws the foul, will go to the line. She has a load down there, Rangie Bassard. A good look by Ambrosio to feed her. Yeah, that's a very unselfish pass, too, from Ambrosio. Had a two-on-one opportunity and gave it off to Bassard, who had the angle on her defender there in law coming over late. Bassard averaging just a shade under 18. She had 21 the other night against Missouri State. It hasn't come easy for her this afternoon. She has nine. And now make it 10. And she's done a nice job, I think, Denning, of not kind of pressing. She's usually used to getting more shot attempts, but she hasn't hunted her shot necessarily. She's kind of kept that emotion, as you talked about earlier, in check, and she's playing a fine floor game. Sometimes you can tell when Bassard is trying to press just a little bit too much by her, her three-point attempts. When she is right. out there well beyond the arc, firing out from 24, 25 feet, when, that's when she's frustrated. She's not getting the looks that she wants down low. And so she has done a good job this afternoon just kind of taking what UMKC is willing to give her. She's got 11 points and seven rebounds and a three-pointer by Aries Washington. She's got five in the quarter. Lead cut to six. Turnover. Buzzer beater. No good. Boy, if that goes in, we got a brand new ball game. As it is, the Roos are hanging around. It's 52-46, final 10 minutes coming up on WSU-TV.
little bit of a scoring flurry in that third quarter. And certainly UMKC was one of the, the, the team that absolutely had to break out offensively. They did so, relatively speaking. And here they are within six of Wichita State after the end of three quarters. If you're J.C. Hoyt, I think you're plenty pleased considering how it started. I think that three ball at the end from Washington was big because they are going to need her to get on some kind of a roll here in this fourth quarter. She's been essentially a non-factor through the first three, only has five points, but that's the kind of shot for a scorer like that just to see the ball go through the hoop that can oftentimes get them going. So the Shockers ended up with 23 first quarter points and 20 in the third quarter, but UMKC outscoring the Shockers 25-20. And Wichita State clinging to a 52-46 lead, led individually by Diamond Lockhart with 12, although she didn't score in that third quarter. Rangy Bussard with 11. Sabrina Lozada Cabbage has 10. The Shockers need to find a way to keep India Johnson out of the paint. She's got 18. She's going crazy. Yeah, that high ball screen has just given her a lot of freedom, a lot of room to work down the lane and has either given her an opportunity to utilize the little floater and the little runner, or it's opened up some other opportunities to get Kristen Moore involved, who's been the other big scorer for UMKC. I think that the Ruse have really found something that they can utilize going forward, and the Shockers will have to make an adjustment. The Ruse shot 61% in that third quarter on 11 out of 18, and so that really gave them a shot in the arm they needed. That three by Aries Washington was their first in 12 tries. So again, neither team really makes a lot of hay three point wise, but that one really helped not only Aries Washington individually, but UMKC as a team. Here they are within six, two possession game. We start the fourth quarter. Law, a little step back jumper, left it short. Offensive rebound by one of the shortest players on the floor, Dillard. She's tied up, but it'll go to Wichita State. So there's one bullet dodged. This is a game that could very well come down to one or two possessions. And if you can just steal one with an offensive board like Lockhart and Stovall have done a couple of times, or Dillard did just there, it very well may be the difference. Lockhart had to know that the cavalry was coming, but she didn't cover it up, so a turnover. Yeah, did everything right there. Wichita State had broken the press and looked like they had an opportunity for some numbers and then inexplicably kind of slowed down and let the trailer come up behind. Kristen Moore banks it in on the feed and a high-low pass from Kiana Law. The Ruse are within four. They have never led in this one. It's been all shockers all the time. There's about three dangerous passes in a row. Just going to say, <laughs> holding your breath with every pass on that press break. Bassard elbow jumper after a near turnover. Boy, they were within an eyelash of <laughs> real trouble, but Bassard knocks it down. If any UMKC player didn't trim their fingernails before this game, <laughs> there may have been a turnover. There. Yeah, any, <laughs> any time during that possession. Lockhart comes away with a miss. Two on two with Ambrosio, and she peels it back to start the offense. About seven rebounds for Diamond Lockhart. Lozada Cabbage to Bassard. Couldn't get the roll. And to the ruse it goes as Cesaria Ambrosio couldn't corral the rebound. So the ruse with another chance to trim it a little further. Shockers led by as many as 15 here in the half. Lob underneath, looking for Kristen Moore. That was a low percentage pass right there. And the Shockers can exhale, or at least for the moment. Lozada Cabbage to key it in. Each team with 14 turnovers. Good look, diagonal, Bassard banks it in. Ambrosio is a really good passer. Well, UMKC kind of leaves Law out on an island playing center field in this press, and so as a result, 
If anytime you cross half court, you're going to have a two on one at the very least, and that's a great look from Ambrosio. She's got four assists. Just looking diagonal, and a nice job by Rangy Bassard to dive to the rim. Rangy has a very good feel of how to move without the basketball, where the open spaces are on the court, and it oftentimes puts her in a great position to score. Nice job by Kristen Moore to negotiate through the shocker defense and bank it in. It's down to six again. We said at the outset, UMKC basically gets their points from one or two sources, and they're doing it again. But it, this afternoon, it's been two somewhat unexpected sources. Well, Wichita State looking particularly shaky, breaking the press, and they ended up turning it over by stepping on the sideline. Andra Stovall absorbed some contact, but you got to be strong with the ball. UMKC has been pawing at it all afternoon. Law traveled. If that goes down, they're within four, and then it, as it is, it's anybody's ball game, but UMKC just trying to get over that last hump. Haven't been able to do it so far. Home run ball, incomplete, but a foul. For or against Wichita State? For, I believe. I think they got Kiara Law. Boy, that was a bailout if I've ever seen one on a a home run pass attempted by Rangy Bassard that looked like it was going to go out of bounds. And a foul was called on Kiana Law. Shocker's very fortunate there. And she didn't have to either. That no. ball was going out of bounds. She gets the steal anyway. Now nobody's happy. That was a jump ball ruled going the way of UMKC. There were some elbows being swung around, which is a no-no as well. So there's been some squawking from both Keitha Adams and J.C. Hoyt here in the last couple of minutes. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what I just saw. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, couple, couple of turnovers, one foul, maybe one that wasn't called. Just holding on to the basketball seems like a very difficult proposition in the second half. It's been a chore. So there was a foul on India Johnson. That's her third. The Ruse second of the quarter. And Wichita State clinging to a six point lead that was as big as 15. Bassard. Misfires from three. Washington back in a hurry will hand it off to Dillard to set up the offense. Six and change left to go here in this one. Johnson gets all the way in, wouldn't go for that time. A rare miss by India Johnson and now a run out for Lockhart. Well, it's been that kind of half. For Wichita State, they can't seem to get rid of UMKC. Dead layup blown by Diamond Lockhart. That's the player you want out in the open floor who has been so confident and aggressive on the offensive end. That was a great look ahead from Ambrosio, but. Law spins one out, wouldn't go. That would have gotten them within four. A couple of opportunities lost for the Ruse. This has been a whole half of what ifs. Three right wing by Lozada Cabbage wouldn't go. Rebound wrestled away from UMKC by Rangy Bassard. Bodies all over the floor. Looks like everybody's going to survive that collision. There's been some battles down low for these rebounds and a lot of contact to be sure. Bassard now with eight boards to go along with her 15 points. Kiana Law picked up her third personal foul in that little exchange that you just saw. Preston, little short jumper rolls in. Preston has eight. Love that baseline out of bounds play for Wichita State. It gives Preston a chance to get isolated on a slightly smaller defender where she can use her physicality, use her size just to create enough space to get that jumper off. Stacey Hoyt's gonna get a technical foul.
Boy, she absolutely was in the ear of Brian Esterline. And you could see it coming for uh, 15, 20, 25 seconds. That was uh, not exactly a slow burn. I think a technical foul has been building for about 15 or 20 minutes I think with you the might way be this right. game has been playing out. And, and really, neither coach is all that thrilled with what's no. going on out there. Bassard apparently will shoot the technical foul shots. And of course, Bassard misses the free throw. So Rangy Bassard makes one of two. The lead is now nine. Casey Hoyt's still over there pleading her case. And it looks more of a civil conversation now between her and the official. India Johnson at it again goes to the left hand, scoops it in. She's got 20. Regardless of the outcome for UMKC, it's a great sign that India Johnson get rolling on the offensive end. They will need her contributions, and she has looked fantastic this afternoon. Preston left it short, but got fouled. So Preston will go to the free throw line. Shockers only five out of six from line, only been there six times. Just under four minutes left to go in this one. Shockers lead it by seven with a couple of free throws on the other side. Shockers hanging on to a lead. It's been cut to six on a couple of occasions. It's currently seven with an opportunity to go higher with Shockers shooting a couple of free throws here shortly. You can catch the latest episode of On Pace with Shocker Track and Field. Keeps you up to date with the latest Wichita State track and field news. We were happy to be joined by John Wise at halftime, the assistant coach in the Shocker Track and Field Club. They opened their indoor season yesterday with the 11th annual inter-squad meet. Draft, of course, held each year, forming three teams that compete against each other. And as Coach Wise mentioned, over 30 alumni returned to campus to compete against their former teammates. Team Taliamuk, the yellow team, won its eighth championship yesterday and fourth of their last five years. Steve Rainbow previews the American Conference track and field teams, and you can hear a roundtable discussion on how to make track and field and road racing more popular. That's on pace. The Shocker Track and Field, the Shocker Track and Field on WSU TV's YouTube channel. Wichita State 59, UMKC 52. We've seen a little bit of everything here in the second half, getting a track meet in the third quarter that was won by UMKC 25 to 20, and a fourth quarter that's featured a technical in J.C. Hoyt's uh, return to Wichita State, but a team in the ruse that haven't gone away either. I think you're seeing a UMKC team that is pretty much selling out on the defensive end to try and create turnovers. And they've done it, but they've also allowed their fair share of easy buckets in transition. And Wichita State will have to break four minutes and 43 seconds more of pressure because it's certainly going to be coming. Preston's going to shoot two free throws for Wichita State. She's got eight points, has not been to the line yet today. Only two shockers have. And that's a big make by Preston. 
lead up to eight. So that keeps the pressure and the urgency at a high level against the Ruse when they get the ball. And Preston makes both lead back up to nine. So a three possession game here, just under four minutes left in this one. And I think Wichita State may start playing offense for defense here. Andre Stovall coming in as a substitute for Preston and the Shockers have that luxury now up nine. India Johnson has gotten to the bucket at will here in the second half. Timeout called by J.C. Hoyt. On the other hand though, she got four fouls, so that's something to monitor. That was a great hedge there from Sabrina lozada Cavage. Really forced her towards the sideline. It allowed the trap to come over and eventually forced a timeout. So Johnson with 20 points. She came in averaging 5.4. She had four points and an overtime loss to ORU, but she has been on her head today. Nine of 17 from the floor, but four personal fouls. She's the only player with four. She's also turned it over seven times, so she's been uh, a feast or famine kind of player for UMKC today. So after a quick timeout, UMKC keeps possession, trailing by nine. Aries Washington has been real quiet offensively today. And they've basically been switching off at least two or three times to try to shut down Washington, but she scores anyway over Bassard, who switched to help. That's just a tough bucket. Bassard did everything right, kept the hands up and forced Washington into a difficult jumper, but sometimes that's just a good score making a play. You tip your cap and move on. Inside four minutes left. Shockers running some clock. An explosive Shocker first quarter has won the day, at least so far. Stovall, a little teardrop on the baseline. Her first basket of the game, that's a big one. UMKC only shoots, what, about 28.5% from three-point range. So it's not a big part of their arsenal. And Washington misses, and Bassard collects the rebound. Which makes it so tough to come back when you're essentially having to try and trade buckets. And now Wichita State can lead the clock. I'm sure UMKC will pressure and try to trap, but if you're the Shockers, you absolutely have to run this down to about five seconds before you even think about a shot. Stovall with six, with five. Lockhart, three straight away. That might have been a dagger had that gone. Washington collects the rebound. Ruse still breathing. Inside three minutes. UMKC not exactly pressing the issue here offensively. A little runner is no good. Moore got fouled though. So I guess all's well that ends well, but they basically pounded it for 15 seconds and didn't really do much of anything offensively. They're at the point now where it's gotta be pretty much stop and score every time every down. Time, they yeah. haven't have left themselves with a whole lot of margin for error as far as the clock goes. Kristen Moore to shoot two. She's three of three from there today. She's got 19 points. Moore and Johnson have combined for 39, now 40 of UMKC's 55 points. That was Wichita State's first foul, so no need to worry about stopping the clock and getting UMKC to the stripe. Kristen Moore, just a 65.5% foul shooter. Left that one short. Bassard, another rebound. It's 10. She's got a double-double. Lead is eight. Shockers probably won't shoot until there's about two minutes left on the game clock. And UMKC is apparently content to let them pass it around the perimeter. There's Kristen Moore with a hard hedge and the foul with seven on the shot clock, but if you're gonna do that, do that 20 seconds ago. Yeah, I don't think that's what they were trying to do. That is not a great foul with Lockhart 30 feet from the basket and going the wrong way too. They, they were in no position to even get a shot up and frankly got bailed out. Seven on the shot clock right there. As Kristen Moore, the taller, more physical player, just 
couldn't provide enough space to stay away from the foul, and Diamond Lockhart buries her first free throw. We're looking more and more like the Shockers are gonna make enough plays here down the stretch to fend off UMKC that got as close as six. Team's best free throw shooter at the line, Lockhart, now 12 of 13 this year. Lockhart very quiet offensively in the second half before those two free throws. She has 14 points and the lead swells back to 10 with two minutes left in this one. Lockhart picks up the personal. It's only the Shocker's second team foul, as Denning told you. So now Moore and Johnson both with four personal fouls. Although at this point, I'm not sure that it's gonna make much of a difference. 10 point Shocker lead inside two minutes and UMKC three point shooting challenged, you should say. One for 13 from three point range today. And Dillard is not a shooter, number one. No one wants she to is. take it. Washington hops through the lane and banks it in. She's got nine. She was scoreless in the first half. Clever little out of bounds play there. Bassard took it out, but then passed it over to Ambrosio. And the travel by Diamond Lockhart couldn't keep her footing. So not over just yet. Eight point shocker lead, 89 seconds remaining. A couple times against the press, Lockhart has done a good job breaking the initial wave and then has kind of stopped. And that is what will cost you when you allow those defenders to come up from the backside. Washington looking to create. They go under the screen and Shockers dodge a bullet. Foul in backcourt, a couple of Ruse coaches pleading for a jump ball, but a foul called instead. So Washington misfires on a three. That would have cut the lead to five but we go back down the other end to shoot free throws. And that's gonna do it for Moore, who has fouled out. Kristen Moore departs with 20 points. Samantha Waldron, who's averaged 10, is scoreless today. We basically talked a lot about Aries Washington being quiet. Waldron, one of the heroes of the game last year, has barely shown up. 20 minutes, 0 for 4 from the floor. Ambrosio splits a pair. She's got four points. The lead is nine. Back to a three possession game again. Boy, Lozada Cabbage got bulldozed. And she hit the deck hard. Watch number 11 in white. Law, big and physical, just trucked her in the lane. That's a tough call. I'm not sure if they said that her heels were inside that restricted area. I didn't see an indication that was the case, but. It was pretty clear that once Slaw put her head down, she was going to the basket yeah. one way or another. Law has seven, now eight. She averages right at eight. Quick timeout for J.C. Hoyt and UMKC. 102 left to go in this one. So basically it comes down now to Denning handling the ball, make, making a few free throws. You can stop by the Shocker Sports Grill and Lanes two hours prior to all WSU men's basketball games. Enjoy great game day specials on food and drinks. Perfect place to meet up with friends before all the men's home games. And if they're on the road, you can watch them on TV. At Shocker Sports Grill and Lanes, lower level in the Radigan Student Center. They head toward halftime in Stillwater. Shocker men trailing Oklahoma State 23 to 18 in a bit of an offensively challenged game down at Gallagher Iba. Here, Wichita State used a 23 to 10 first quarter to keep UMKC pretty much at arm's length the entire game. Shockers led it 13 to one 
They led by as many as 15 in the second half, by as few as six, but it just looked like UMKC is gonna run out of gas. And I think you hit it right on the head chain when you said it looks like Wichita State's gonna make just enough plays down the stretch. That really has been the difference is whenever the Roos made a run, whenever they sliced it to single digits, the Shockers able to put together a flurry of one or two good offensive possessions, get it back out to 12 or 13, and for the most part have given themselves enough cushion to survive the turnovers. Well, and they'd have to have a rash of them for UMKC to have a chance to pull this one out of the fire. Shockers will be shooting free throws, and as we said, it just comes down to handling the ball, making free throws. India Johnson is now fouled out, so there's 40 points out of the game for UMKC. So now the question is, where's the offense come from? Washington's probably the answer. She's made their only three-pointer here this afternoon, Aries Washington. All nine of her points here in the second half, but that, even that may not be enough because we're now down inside a minute. Diamond Lockhart started quickly, was quiet in the second and third quarters, now have made three free throws here in the fourth quarter. Backing up her 20-point game against Missouri State with another fine output here this afternoon. 16 more for Diamond Lockhart. Stripped by Andre Stovall, and that just may do it. Andre Stovall has made some big-time plays down the stretch here for Wichita State. The little floater on the baseline when UMKC was making a charge, and now she gets the strip in transition here, gets fouled, and a chance to pretty much ice it. Kiana Law has picked up her fourth personal foul, so UMKC running out of ammo. Andre Stovall, senior guard from Arlington, Texas. Got two points here this afternoon. Shockers, 13 of 15 from the free throw line today. That'll play. They were 15 out of 17 against Missouri State the other night. Loose ball tracked down by the Ruse. Shockers, I was going to say, trying not to foul. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last thing you want to do inside a minute when you're ahead. But they also had one to give, so I guess I'll... Uh, Give Rangy Bassard a mulligan there. Law scoops it up. Timeout by UMKC. Lead down eight, 36.6 left to go in this one. A Wichita State timeout. Beg your pardon. If you're Wichita State, it, it becomes pretty elementary from this point out. Inbound the basketball, hold on to it, wait to get fouled, make your free throws. Well, and be strong with the ball maybe is the most important thing because UMKC at different points here this afternoon has had some success with the press because Wichita State wasn't all that strong with the ball, losing it a little bit, going to the floor, accepting contact, expecting a call. Can't expect a call here in the Final minute. And this is where it's great where you've got Rangy Bassard, one of your best free throw shooters. And if you can get the ball into her hands, we know how strong she's going to be with the basketball. And so ideally you can just feed her the rock, let her get fouled, and let her go to the strike. Next weekend, Shockers will continue the homestand. Back-to-back -back games with Chicago State and Alcorn State. Then they'll hit the road again to go to South Dakota State. And back here in late December to open American play with Tulsa. That's exactly what they did. There you go. And the, the women's college basketball game has the rule in effect where if you take that time out, then they move the ball up towards half court. It gives you a lot more space to inbound the ball. You can flash towards the passer, and it makes it much easier to get the ball in. Bassard is four out of five from the line. Very quietly had 16 points and 10 rebounds. There's 17. And it looked for a long, long time that she was going to be light years away from her scoring average at 17.9, but we look up and she's right at it. There's a miss to keep her on 17 points. So 17 points and 10 rebounds. Law 
blocked by Bassard, but a foul. Kiana Law has 10 points. She's perfect from the free throw line so far today. Came in nine for 20 at the line. Shockers had the lead cut to six on a couple of different occasions, but the Ruse could get no closer. It's seven now, but only 25 and a half seconds remain in this one. Bassard with a left-handed layup to put a cap on this one. Rangy Bassard with 19 points. And UMKC will shoot it one more time with nine seconds left. Now with three, with two, with one. Washington's prayer not answered. And Wichita State basically survives this one. It wasn't always pretty, but they'll certainly take it. 72 to 63, your final score. And it didn't start out the way we expected it to with Rangy Bassard struggling to score, but Diamond Lockhart, as we alluded to in the, in the pregame, did a nice job offensively, especially in that first quarter. Didn't start out the way we expected to in more than one way as Wichita State just jumped out of the gates and then just kind of hung on from there. The deficit shrunk at times, but ultimately one or two more plays down the stretch. They got Bassard involved and were able to just make enough free throws and prevent enough turnovers to hold off a very feisty UMKC team. Chockers get to three and eight on the season. We'll be back with more on WSU TV. Considering Wichita State was coming off a game at Denning where they lost 94 to 71 in a really a forgettable game against Missouri State to bounce back and play like they did, especially in the first quarter, it was nice to see today. Yeah, the term we used was a wake up call in Springfield, a team that needed to get challenged on the defensive end. They absolutely responded, I thought, were very impressive through most of the ball game this afternoon. Held UMKC in check for two, at least the first half when they held them to 21 total points and were able to just stay composed down the stretch. They did what they needed to do. They made winning plays, and ultimately that was enough. Well, they'll be back at it next weekend, the Shocker Winter Classic, as Wichita State will take on Chicago State and Alcorn State right here at Charles Coke Arena. Hope you'll join us coming up next weekend. For Denny Garrick, Shane Dennis, saying thanks for watching. Shockers win it so long from Charles Coke Arena.